Anytime we implement a completely new process in government, it takes time. It just takes time to figure out what that looks like. Police agencies across Oregon say they're not ready to start issuing permits to purchase firearms required in Measure 114. The measure takes effect Thursday. Good evening. Thanks for joining us for K2 News at 6. I'm Deborah Knapp. And I'm Steve Dunn. We're also waiting for a federal judge's decision on whether to temporarily pause the measure while four lawsuits go through the courts. K2's Christina Giardinelli is following the fate of Measure 114. She's live in Portland now. Christina, police agencies are saying, wait, why is that? Yeah, Oregon Police Chiefs Association says it doesn't even have an application ready yet for people who might want to purchase a gun if this goes into effect on uh, December 8th. And its members are saying they're still working out a way to make this a uniform application system across the state. Measure 114 is set to take effect in a matter of days, with multiple lawsuits already filed against it. Statewide, police also say they're not ready to implement the permits to purchase that the measure calls for. Chris Skinner is the president of the Oregon Association Chiefs of Police. The ballot measure in the way it was written had some unanswered questions that we have to have answered before we understand what the process can look like. He says one of the remaining questions is, what is the application process supposed to look like? We want to definitely do something so that no matter where you go, whether it's here in Eugene or up and down the I-5 corridor in Eastern Oregon, if you walked into that police department, that that application would look the same. He says there are also unknowns on how the fingerprints, safety classes, and competency demonstrations are going to take place. Traditionally, when we have either new legislation, whether it's a House bill or a Senate bill that, that goes through our processes, we are invited to the table to have conversations about the unintended consequences. And in this particular case, I think uh, what, I, what our hope would have been is that we were involved in this conversation sooner. The Yes on Measure 114 team was not available for an interview today, but sent me a written statement responding to the association. It reads in part, we welcome the opportunity to sit down with him and other law enforcement to talk about implementation. We're eager to make the process as smooth as possible. She says this is a complex case and she'll need more time to review a case law, but she did promise uh, she'll make that decision before Monday or Tuesday early uh, next week. Now, the, today's hearing is focused on whether or not a Measure 114 uh, poses irreparable harm to uh, gun owners. Plaintiffs calling for a pause on Measure 114 say that multiple rounds are needed for untrained gun owners to use their weapon in self-defense. Union County Sheriff Cody Bowen, a plaintiff on the case, says even trained law enforcement officers have to use multiple rounds. But when the judge asked for evidence showing how often multiple rounds are used by civilians in self-defense, none were produced. It, number one, it takes a lot to take a human life to begin with and understand the consequences that go with that. But being put in that situation or being put in that position and knowing that I don't have as many rounds as the per se bad guy, that's scary to me. There was a lot of talk today in court about there not being an, enough evidence to back that up. What would you say to that? Um, I don't think we've looked hard enough as far as evidence wise. Michael Crone, special counsel for the attorney general and co-counsel for the defense, says multiple capacity rounds don't fit into what case law defines as necessary for self-defense. You can literally take any magazine or any firearm you own, and if it's a handgun with a removable clip, you can replace the clip and use the exact same firearm. Yeah, a federal judge will hear, hear arguments in this courtroom here tomorrow for and against a pause on Measure 114, which takes effect December 8th. Uh, those asking for the pause say the part of the measure that calls for magazine limits would cause them irreparable damage for people wanting to buy or sell uh, firearms. Oregon's attorney general arguing that putting a pause on the measure would cause unnecessary deaths. Three federal lawsuits have been filed challenging the constitutionality of Measure 114, which limits high-capacity magazines and requires permits to purchase new firearms. On Friday, a district court judge is set to hear arguments for and against pausing the measure. Tung Yin is a law professor at Lewis and Clark. He says that the lawsuits are challenging what kinds of restrictions states can put on Second Amendment right to bear arms. Some that have been struck down are ones that are so... Um, 
extreme as effectively to be a ban on guns. An example of that in June, the Supreme Court struck down a century-old New York law that required people to prove a need for self-defense in order to conceal carry. While the lawsuits against Measure 114 cite that New York ruling, Ian says Oregon's law is not the same. Any individual case that goes up to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court decides um, one way or the other technically it's only binding on the parties in the case. He says a judge will likely consider whether Oregon's infrastructure for permitting is too burdensome. If you're told that, oh, well, you have to go to do the safety class and you have to have the background check and you have to pay for the permit and you say, okay, where do I do all this? And you find out that, well, the sheriffs don't have the capacity to do it. The three lawsuits also claim the magazine capacity limits in 114 would stop people from owning commonly produced firearms. Ian says the state will need to show that enough other models are available. If there are enough of those, whatever that would mean, then I think there would be the state would have a good argument to say, look, your right has not been infringed.